So what are you finding over there? Some curculio, aren't you? Oh, there's signs. That's an insect that uh, plum curculio and has a little crescent shaped mark on a lot of fruit. And, and many of these uh, fruits have the kiss of the curculio on them. Right. And, um, and the plums do too. So um, these, these are both apples and this is a terrible example of the proper distance you should have between apples. I mean, these are, I'm thinking, probably on a semi-dwarf rootstock, which means they could get 14 or 15 feet tall. And they're just way, 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 way too close. It probably should be at least 16 feet apart instead of eight. Um, so they're, they're problematic here. And as you all know, things haven't been pruned here in several years. So there's a lot of competing growth. Um, Within the tree. These may have been shaped when they were first put in the ground. You know, it might have been pruned, and uh, but then the the intervening years have have uh, sort of had had its thing with them. You know, this is a little problematic to look at uh, as as what do we do to prune it? I mean, what we want to do, we always want to prune for sunlight penetration and air penetration. Uh, this has got, you know, lots and lots and lots of stuff off. Uh, one of the ways that I would, for, first of all, when I look at a tree, when I'm going to be pruning, I like to get a lot of different points of view, viewpoints. You know, look at it from a lot of different angles. Some of the time, make sure I'm not even thinking, I'm just kind of taking it in. And in that way, sometimes remedies come come right in, things that are are, are real obvious that need to get done. but. I like to look at it as it is now and also look at it as it will probably be five years from now if nothing gets done and even 10 years from now and kind of look for the problem areas. When you're doing pruning, it's a good idea if you can find a way to make one big cut rather than 15 little cuts, it's better for the tree, better for you because you'll get a lot less vegetative growth that way. Uh, and so, you know, this one is like, wow, this is awfully, awfully, awfully busy. So it, the one, the, are you, are you going to go ahead and, and make the one big cut or, or the two big cuts? Well, we're going to, we will today, yes. Good, okay. But I just wanted to, uh, to bring that up. Well, I think you have to point out <clears throat> to, to them what, what, the, what you saw in your walk around. Well, one of the other ways of, of pruning is if you see things that are problems right now, maybe taking those out first and then taking a relook at it. If you see branches that are diseased or damaged or rubbing against each other or growing into the center, those would be probably the first ones I would take out and then take another look at it and see. Uh, the, having been an arborist, and knowing something about the growth of trees, I know that whenever you get major branches that are V-shaped growing in a V pattern, that's bad news. Because trees grow that way, but they also grow that way. So over time, as V's are growing this way, they begin to push against each other, causes a split. Uh, that split can be an entry for insects and disease, but it also means that in some windstorm or some uh, ice storm, crack. So you might as well be the doer of that and the shaper of that rather than let, letting nature do it. Be, that's the same with a fruit tree or a huge oak. You know, beware of the V crotches. A good U-shaped crotch is really strong. The fibers are all uh, cross-hatched and, you know, real strong. But V-shape is always a weak one. So right off the bat... Can you point out um, a U-shape and a V-shape? Yeah, this, this, the, these two sort of competing major... Uh, stems of this are, are pretty much V-shaped and they come right down to here and sure enough you know there's sign of two or three inches of cracking already that's being calloused over so it's just a matter of time before uh, if we didn't do anything before one of these would would break out. So you take off one of those? Oh I definitely would yeah definitely would. Um, Probably the one on the right. So, 
So well, just, that, I mean, just that's, as a, a that's na- you, neighborhood kind of a comment, Andrew, everybody went through this b- big bunch of wind that, that is from close around Mills River and Etowah over yeah. these last several days and thunderstorms. And the Bradford pears are just notoriously brittle yeah. and notoriously upright. Yeah. And if you look as you drive down around the roads in the in this greater greater Mills River area, the most of the trees you see down over this last week, many of them are Bradford pears that split because because of what Andrew just described. Yeah, yeah very tight V crotch. They, they, they br- have these V cr- things that have the bark inclusion in here where they grow together because they get bigger every year and every year that they get bigger then that makes it weaker in here because it's not well, it, like that there's a lot more room. So it depends on how the size of the, of the tree. When you, you know, buy, if you're buying a tree Bigger isn't necessarily better. In most instances, it's not better because you're going to have to deal with all these strange and weird branch angles already on that. When you buy a whip, which is just almost a branchless little cutting, what you do when you plant it in the ground, and it's a hard thing to do, but you want to clip off the top of it. It's got dormant buds, and it'll bud out three or four small branches. Um, One of those you can then train to be your upright, in the other two or three, very carefully coax those down into a nice 60 or 60 or 40 degree angle, something like that. Many that, people use clothespins. Yeah, clothespins when it's really small. When the tree is hardened off, um, like this one, uh-uh, can't do it. And that one there would be, well, this is limber enough that you could do it somewhat. You could, you could spread some of that if you wanted to. Of course, genetically, this tree is wanting to grow upright and and that would be a good experiment this is a school after all a a learning institution Um, but that's going against the genetics there but yeah when it's really young it's real pliable and you have to be careful not to use too much force and snap that little young branch let off but that that's where you get to really superbly shape shape your tree Uh, this one when we get done is going to be a bit peculiar looking i mean right now it's so busy and so constricted um with one of these coming off, it's going to open up an area that where the branches from the remaining uh, trunk have not been allowed to establish themselves. So it's going to be a bit peculiar, but for the health and vitality of the tree, it's a really good thing to do. So we'll definitely, we'll definitely do that. One of the things you have to think about in your own situation is uh, with your... Now, this, this is not necessarily a great understory, but it's not a bad understory. But depending on how diverse your understory was going to be and how you were going to control, you know, control whether you were going to be mowing, uh, you know, some branches are, are a little bit too low to be able to, you know, to mow around uh, in areas like my friend or some several of our friends. Bill Whipple has an orchard up in West Virginia. Deer are are a absolute problem there. He would probably remove all the branches all up to about five, five and a half feet or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people have to do that when you've got that type of predator around. So where you where you live and who your uh, fruit predators are, besides the two-legged ones, is going to help you determine how to do things. You know, for for mowing, ease of mowing, you know, maybe these low branches would come off. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm just saying th- things to look at. You know, certainly one of these two stems needs to come off, and we can look and try to see which one looks healthier and a little bit better developed and and pick that one as as the main one a general rule is that when you're doing pruning and i know bob did that with the peach tree is to try not to take off more than a third of the vegetative growth at one time if you're gonna if you need to do more than that do it over through two or three seasons so the tree has a chance to recover to have enough leaf matter to you know, to get, send the photosynthase into its roots and keep it going. If you take off too much, you end up with way too much root mass and not enough leaf to, to, to nourish it. But if you take this one, you're going to cut off one of the sides. You're basically taking one of the Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and that's, yeah, that's, I think, something we can do here. Uh, we would probably, if we're going to do that, uh, not do a whole lot else unless there were some problematic things that needed immediate attention. How much would you take into account if this was facing south and so your sun is going to be always more on this side 
therefore you're trying to promote more growth on the north side. Is that important? So that it doesn't lean too much one way or have too many branches? Uh, well, you know, it looks it looks pretty I mean, this one looks pretty, great, pretty upright, so I mean... I've got one where it seems kind of top-heavy to the south. Uh -huh. So my, I'm thinking, should I be promoting growth on the north side? Well, on yours, are there other trees and things blocking, blocking it and blocking the sun? Not really. It's standing all pretty much all by itself. Yeah. Uh, you might check and see if there's vole problems on that other side of the tree. Yeah. I mean, usually the plant will take care of its own needs if it's if it's if it's given a choice choice and chance. It'll balance its branches. All yeah, over. yeah. If it's growing all over in one area, there's got to be some reason. We don't have where we live a prevailing wind that would blow it that way. But you see that on the coast. You know, as you're walking through the inner dune to the beach, and you see all these uh, juniper trees and things with you know all the branches are swept out. That's a prevailing sea uh, salt laden sea breeze that's pruning it that way. Um, but yeah, that's not gonna be an issue here.